Hi, I'm Dave Ingebrigtsen. Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying the Angler's Ark. And today we've got, I guess what we've got to say are classic flies. We've got three, three classics. classics. A classic standard dry fly, a classic Great old wet fly, which you mm -hmm. don't see many of anymore, mm -hmm. and finally a, just a classic standard nymph. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it'll be a, quite a variety. We're glad you joined us. And Leroy, tell us about our first fly. Well, I guess we should tell the audience what they're going to be. The classic dry is going to be a blue, blue quill. quill. Mm -hmm. The wet is going to be the old, old Greenwell's glory. And we're going to end up with a betas nymph. Okay. So you know, I remember that old green, Greenwell glory from the old herder catalog. I just like know? the name of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the blue quill, we're going to use for the tail, I'll use a spade hackle off of a, a blue dun neck. We're going to use a peacock curl out of the eye, but it's going to be stripped to give that segmented body look. The hackle, I'm going to just use a blue dun off of a saddle. The wing will be tied with natural duck quill wing. The thread will be the standard 6 aught black. I have a, a size 14 hook in the vise. I've already pinched the barb off. I'm going to dress the part of the hook shank. I'll dress it all before I'm through. But I like to tie those wings in first I almost, before I... I've almost all dries, I start You with can the get wings them set. Yeah. And, and here I have a matching pair of duck quill wings. Uh, it's important that they match. Yes, otherwise you just don't get a good lineup on the feather. Well, you need the curvatures to be the same and mm -hmm. you need the, uh, the shape of the tips to be the same. Now I may have these a little bit large, but I can adjust them accordingly. Yeah, I'm going to pull some of that down. If I can do them both at once, maybe. You can often no. stick a dubbing needle in there oh, and, and take out a couple sure. of segments. Here. Now I want that about the length of the shank of the hook. And Let's I'm remind them again, because this is so critical when you tie it in with quill wings. Mm -hmm. You're going to use that classic grip where you're going to put a loose loop over the material. Pinch. Pinch very tightly and pull mm -hmm. straight down. And pull down. Now, once you've made that first turn, you never again wrap to the good side of the Go feather forward. from that first right. turn. It'll yeah. cause the feather to warp and twist every time. Now, I'm going to stand those upright. I'm not going to worry about dividing them just yet. Clip it off. Looks like one of them wants to overlap here a little bit, but we'll worry about that coming back. Now I've got the whole hook shank dressed. I'll take a a feather off the side of this, a spade hackle. Oh, I see. You're going to divide the wings later. Sure. Ah, I do when it I first. Come on oh, I, do you? I, yeah, I get them finished first. That's just a you know matter of preference. It makes no difference. No, it wouldn't. And I'll pull a few fibers off of this. And we want them, like all the dries. And, and people get the proportions wrong. You see it wrong all the time. But it, it relies on this tail to help float that oh, fly. Absolutely. Want them the length of the shank of the hook. Again, I'll lay the soft hackle, pinch down. What I like to have, and I suppose it's kind of a classic Catskill proportions, is when you set that fly on the table, it should balance on the tip tail. of the tail and the hackles with the hook just off the tabletop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I've taken a, one of those peacock eyes and stripped it and promptly dropped it. Well, while you're looking for it, I'll mention that it, it's important when you have a quill body of peacock quill, if it calls for it at least, to take that, that hurl out of the eyed section mm -hmm. because when you strip the material off, it'll have a light and dark two-toned effect, and that will give you a ribbed appearance, very buggy appearance when you put it on the hook. Yes. If you just take the hurl from the uh, shaft of the feather, it'll be all dark and it won't have that effect. And now I've gone ahead and tied that in, and I'm going to wind forward here and come up and leave myself room for some hackle. I've stopped behind the wing. Now I'll stick my scissors right between these wings and divide them and take a figure eight around them. And now I'll tie in a blue dun hackle off of that saddle. I like the saddle hackles better for the wings because they, they're a little bit finer. You mean for the hackle? I mean for the hackle. Yeah. The stem's a little finer and it, it has a tendency to lay on the hook a little easier, at least for me. Well, these genetic saddles are so long you can oh, tie a lot yes. of flies out of one feather. 
Now I'm going to go a little bit at an angle here to fill in underneath those wings and then just keep winding forward. Pretty fly. It's, oh, it's, it's so not nice. real brilliant colored or anything, but it's very, all natural very color. Natural. You know what I like to do too, whenever I put the head cement on I, uh, with these bodies, I put some head cement over the body. It oh makes, yes. It makes the body stronger uh -huh. and it uh, it gives it a little deeper gloss. Yeah, I will too as soon as I yeah. get the, the bottle open. It brings out that color segmentation. There's a little divided quill wing on there. Oh, isn't that a pretty little fly? No, I'll get a little drop of head cement here. And I'll go ahead and run it right around the body, and it will pretty well go around. Oh, yeah. You can see that yeah. segmentation really stand up. This is up a fly there. that you can use for any gray mayfly uh, in a I variety do. of sizes. Sure, and I think it could be used for a tractor pattern, too. Well, it sure could because it does look, uh, you know, like a mm -hmm. natural. You bet. Uh -huh. And there's the standard blue quill. Now, you can see it after I, I have. Uh, Put that head cement on the body, it really does shine. It makes it a little richer. It really does. Tail of blue dun, hackle fibers, the body is stripped peacock, pearl out of the eye. The wing material is natural duck wing, and the hackle is blue dun. Well, Leroy, that was a good example of a quill wing dry fly, mm -hmm. sort of a standard old pattern. Now we're going to go to a standard old pattern wet fly using a similar type wing, but tied in the wet fly style. And this one is the Greenwell's Glory. Mm -hmm. And as I said at the intro to the show, I love the name. And you know, I can remember when I very first started looking in the old herder's yeah. book on Greenwell's Glory. Greenwell's and Glory. You've you got to love a fly called Greenwell's Glory, whether it works <laughs> okay. or not. Well, we're going to use it. This is all going to be a soft hackle because it is a wet fly type. Right. It will be a, this is off of a hen. Um, it's a saddle patch off a hen. It's ginger in color. The body will be a uh, green floss, be ribbed with an oval gold. Then the wing will be, again, the natural duck quill wing and a six-aught black tying thread. You know, I don't think people use the old standard wet flies no. nearly enough anymore. Although, you know, the, I'm told they're coming they're back. They're coming back, and, and I more. think uh, if we can help that along a little, there is a place for these flies. And whether they represent a drowned insect or a dead and dying insect, or maybe even a nymph, and in some cases mm -hmm. a little streamer, we don't really mm -hmm. know for no. sure. No. But they're very simple to fish with a down and across uh, presentation. And the material is um, very inexpensive material and easy is to find. Cheap, easy to find. Everywhere. And uh, there's a lot to be said for these old patterns. And often they fished them two or three flies at a time on droppers. You bet. And uh, I think people would do well to go back to some of the older patterns and try them. And play with them. Sure. What I've done, I've taken one of the feathers off of that ginger uh, soft hackle. Again, the old pinch loop method. Tie it in place. Of course, we use the soft hackle here because it doesn't have to support the fly. The movement, it soaks sure. It up water sure. to help sink the fly. And it uh, has a movement. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're tying on a standard wet fly hook. Mm -hmm. This is a size uh, to Give tone. it a little more weight to help it sink. You bet. Now, I'll take the green floss. This happens to be a four-strand floss. It's uh, sort of an olive, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. an olive. I've seen this. Sometimes people don't like to work with the four strands because they're a little bit cumbersome. It mm -hmm. does come single, but whatever you're used to. Now, I tied it in. I'm not going to cut it off. I'm just going to pull it back. That's all I have to do. That saves me a step. And then the rib, we're going to go back to the old gold, oval gold tinsel again. I'll lay it in and get my thread up to the front. Now, like we've done always in the past, I don't like to see a ribbing fall off the end of, mm -hmm. the, of the fly, so I'm going to take one wrap, if I can get everything undone, behind that ribbing. You know, I have to chuckle, and I probably shouldn't even say this, but ever since you showed me that trick, I've been doing it. But the other day I was thinking, you know, I never had a rib fall off the back anyway. <laughs> well, I have seen them <laughs> that way. If you put it way. on there under tension I and you tie that. it down tight. But uh, I've <laughs> seen some flies that in, in shops that have been, uh, boy, especially steelhead flies, uh -huh. the, the ribs just coming off uh -huh. badly. Well, I think that's a case of bad wrapping, oh, but I, sure I've been doing it your true. way ever since you showed it to well, me. Well, it's just something I that I chuckle when I realize, hey, I never <laughs> had a rib come off anyway. <laughs> oh well. Now up comes the rib. Again, I'm not going to put that real close together. 
don't want it real close together at all. And of course here with the solid floss underbody you don't have to counter no, rib at all. No, it stands right up there and looks real nice. Well, that was a good drop. Now, again, we'll go back to this soft hackle, and this will be tied on as a beard. Now, it could be tied wrapped all the way around the hook and tied down. You could probably even leave it wrapped all the way around the hook. It wouldn't hurt a thing, but I'll just tie it on as a beard. Well, and some people even wrap it as a collar and then pull it pull all it under all as down. a beard and tie yeah. it down. That works well, too. The only thing I'm going to do is just hold this under, take it with my other two fingers, and then just do a backward kind of a soft loop thing there and it'll all stay right in place. Now if you want to shorten it up a little, that's not a problem. Just pull on the hackle there. You know, I like that, putting on the beard before the wing. For some reason, I, on a wet fly like that, I usually put the wing on first and then finish up with the beard. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know why. It's just something I started well, to do. Well, to me, it would look like that, that hackle but, uh, would be, I mean, the wing would be in the way of getting the hackle on. Well, I, you, I like you your way of doing it, it. yeah. Now again, we'll go back to the match duck quill, and I'll take a section out. Now, I don't know if we said on the uh, dry fly or not, but when you match the wings on the dry fly, you have the convex sides together so the wings flare apart. Mm -hmm. But now I suppose you're going to have the concave sides together. So they, so stay, they together. Uh, stay together. You yeah. Bet. And with the dry fly, I put it so that the curvature was going toward the front. Yeah. And this time, I want it going toward the rear. Yeah, that's just how I do that, yeah. So I'll lay it on there. Again, soft wrap, and pinch and squeeze and pull through. Well, that works so much easier to put that beard on first. I don't know why I never did that. Well, that's the only way I've done it. Well, I, it just you know, leaves you much more you room for get, the head, sure. and it just makes sense. Whatever you get used to doing. Well, part of it was, you know, I was teaching myself a lot of the time until later on, and it was just something I started doing. Well, this is I've taught myself to do this, too, and well, I thought I was doing it wrong. Obviously, you taught it the right way. Oh, <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> you had a better teacher than I did. Now, I'll just put a small whip finish on that. Uh, that makes much Clip more sense that. than the way I did it. And we'll get a drop a head seam in on it all. And you know, that wing, it, it will really work. You, you look at the wing and you don't think it'll work. It's just going to be standing up there in the way, but it does. It works very well. Well, of course, the thing that makes us the classic wet fly now is the soft materials for the mm -hmm. tail and the hackle, the fact that the wing is not standing up. It's laid back over the body mm -hmm. and tied on the heavier wear. Mm -hmm. You know, one other thing it does putting that the beard in before the wing is it prevents having fiber sticking out from the sure. head as sometimes sure. happens. Can move it all. Well there's Greenwell Glory, like you say, the old classic pattern, has a ginger soft tackle for the tail and the, the beard in front, has the uh, olive for the body ribbed with oval gold, and the matched duck quill wing. All right, that was the Greenwell Glory, and uh, I really enjoyed watching that being tied. Well, you learned something new. I learned something new, and I think it was a good idea. Now we're gonna tie a really good all-around nymph. It's a, it's a betis nymph, and of course there are hundreds of different betis mayflies. They range all the way from the size 12 down to size 22. So wherever you live in the country, you can bet there are going to be betis flies around. And uh, whether there are or not, this is a good standard nymph pattern. Mm -hmm. What are you going to use to tie a betis nymph? Well, we're going to use some green dubbing. It's a medium green. The thread will be a green. The uh, throat or the, the hackle fibers on this, I should say, and the tail will be a dyed green mallard flank, and the wing case will be black ostrich. Now, i got to ask you, you keep saying green, but don't, do you mean well, olive? olive, yes, yeah, I, it I is olive. I think it's important because yes. when we think of green, it's green, totally different than yes. when we think of olive. No, this is olive. I have a size 14 in the, the vise. I've already pinched the barb. I'll go ahead and dress this entire hook shank again. You know, the color olive used to drive me crazy when I was starting out. I'd read books and it said olive. Well, uh -huh. you'd look and there'd be light olive and medium olive and dark olive what and color pale olive. olive and yes. what color is olive? Well, I suppose <laughs> basically olive is the color of olives, but uh, there are all sorts of shades. And I think it's appropriate to tie different shades of olive mm -hmm. flies. And you know, for a long time, I didn't like to fish olive because it, so many of the streams you're in, there's the, the green 
vegetation, the oh, moss, the whatever. No and I thought, the fish will never see that. It's the yeah. same color, but uh, that's oh, not true. Well, a lot that's of bugs not are true. A medium olive. Sure are. Yeah. You bet they are. But that drove me crazy. That and blue dun. What's blue dun? Yes. And, yes. Uh, those two I really had a hard time with. And you know, I really didn't start using any blue dun stuff until I started fishing some of the Montana streams. Well, of course, when I started tying, there wasn't any real blue dun. Uh, there wasn't a lot of good blue dun available until, oh, in the 70s when Andy Miner's stuff started to become available. Started and, and breeding it then toward that, uh, the... Then they started producing the genetic oh, ackles based on what he had okay. done. Yeah. So prior to 1970, most people had only read about blue dun. Okay. And the tires today don't know how, how good they've got it. <laughs> now I'll put on the dubbing. And again, I'm not going to use much dubbing. You need to keep that as sparse as you can to enable you to build the taper. And you know with this, this soft hackle, this, this mallard flank, again, this fly is just going to move lots of movement in the water, which I really like. I, I think you need that movement on a wet fly in particular. And just start building a small tapered body. I'm going to go forward a little bit and then go back over it a little. Just start building that taper going to have to get more dubbing on, I can see that. And you can vary the color, the shade of green or olive on this oh, too. Absolutely. You can, uh, whatever your, your natural is. And of course the color changes a little when it's wet. Too. It does, yes. Now we've got to say we're tying this in a fairly large size so it's easier to see. But it, it goes, the naturals go all the way down to size 22. 22s, and they're representing they sure different do. insects, but they're mm -hmm. all in the betas family. Mm -hmm. Now the hardest part you'll find, at least that I have found doing this, is is getting a collar small enough of this dyed green mallard. Well, I, I don't see how you would do it in a size 20. Well, so. I'd, I'm not real. I'd have to I, play with that. I some. think I would, when I get into smaller sizes, tend to use uh, just a few fibers uh -huh. put in as a, a beard or as mustache legs. Well, what I've done, I've gone ahead and tied this in by the tip because the the some of the smaller fibers are going to be up toward that tip end. Put a set of hackle pliers mm -hmm. on it, and then I'll just kind of stroke them back as I go through. Well, and tie that, that down. This down. larger fly, that mallard works very well. Oh, very well. And I, I'm like you. I don't know exactly how you would do that on the real tiny flies. I'm, yeah. I'm no, sure I there must I, be a way. Well, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a mallard small feather small enough no, to do that with I but don't know that I either. think I would then tend to go to as I say either beard or mustache type hackle. That would be the easiest yeah. by far. Yeah. And then the wing case is just a piece of clipped uh, ostrich, black ostrich and and I really like this too because again this is a very soft it moves very well. It's oh, got a lot of filament sticking A lot out. of yeah. filament yeah and and I'm just going to double this then double it once more just to make oh. this wing case a little uh -huh. bit bigger. Uh -huh. I'll clip this off then just tie it in. And you want this wing case fairly short when you tie it on. Now I'm just going to come in here and stand this all up. If I can get all the mallard out of the way and clip it off. Oh, nice. And now it just kind of all spreads itself out there. Well, you can see that that's a good generic nymph pattern. Oh, it sure is. It sure is. Put a whip finish on it. So soft, like, uh, you know, I, I really think if I had one fly to fish with, I'd have to choose some kind of a soft tackle fly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I really do. Yeah. Well, they look alive and they oh, move. Oh, they do. Get a little I think it's more important to tie an impressionistic fly yes. than a realistic fly. Yes, I do. You can tie a fly that looks photographically like the oh. real bug. It looks like it ought to crawl away. But it also looks like it's molded out of a piece yes. of plastic. Yes. And fish don't eat molded pieces of plastic, no, no matter how real they look. It, so we want the light transmission, the reflection, the, mm -hmm. the, movement, the movement, the impression of, of life, yes. uh, the impression of translucency, even though we're using opaque materials. Sure. And that's why they use the uh, the bright ribs mm -hmm. to give mm -hmm. the reflection to make it look like the light's coming through. And you know, when you said that, I thought to myself, 
uh, I have tied this fly both ways. You tie mm -hmm. it with and without the rib, yeah. and I do occasionally yeah. like to tie well, that fly. People with often rib. ask me, why do you use a gold or a silver rib on an insect? And the reason is because we're trying to create the illusion of translucency using basically opaque sure. materials. Sure. And on the real bug, the light comes through. Sure does. But on our materials, what we can do is we can make them fuzzy so the light comes through, mm -hmm. or we can give a little bit of reflection in there so the light bounces back as though it were coming Which through. Which looks like kind of a trailing of yeah. bubbles almost. So yeah. we're trying to create illusions mm -hmm. when we tie flies rather than exact realism. Mm -hmm. And I think the exact replica flies are great examples oh. of the tire's art. Magnificent things. But with in terms the, of catching fish, yeah. I want something that's going to create if, some illusions. If I'm going to spend that long tying an impressionistic fly that looks identical with the little knotted legs and all of that. I'm not going to let some darn fish chew on it. I don't want any fish working on well, that got, at all. I've got examples of flies at home that you could use as photographic models for an mm -hmm. entomology book. Mm -hmm. They're that good. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, that's an example of the art, not as for the fishermen. You bet. Well, there's a betus nymph, uh, a neat little impressionistic fly with the soft hackle. It has the dyed olive mallard for the tail and the hackle. It has the light green or olive uh, for the dub body and black ostrich for the wing case. That's the betus nymph. But you know, Leroy, let's talk a little bit about how you fish a standard wet fly. I think most fly fishermen today, at least the younger ones, have never fished a real wet fly, <laughs> the classic ones. Because, <laughs> and I think, uh, rightly so, people are really into nymph fishing now, sure. and that makes a lot of sense. Sure. But we tried to encourage people when we tied that Greenwell's Glory to give some of the old classic wet flies a chance, mm -hmm. but how do you fish them? Well, when I first started fly fishing, okay, I didn't know a good hackle from a bad hackle. Well, fly fishing to most people is dry fly. I couldn't make the flies float. I didn't know what to use on them. I didn't have anybody helping me out. So I fished a lot of wet flies. Mm -hmm. I like to fish a wet fly across from me, do a quick upstream mend, and let the fly sink a little. Mm -hmm. The longer the leader with a floating line, the more it'll go down. Mm -hmm. Plus, all those little fibers in there, all the little throat, all the little tail, it's soft. It's going to be working hard. Of course, hard. the classic f way to fish a wet fly is what they is named the wet fly swing. Mm -hmm. You cast down and quartering across, and then you can either put a little mend in to let it sink, that the fly will sink, sure. and then with the line getting tight, it'll swing across the river. Depending well, you want to strip the put the line under your finger. Uh -huh. Now you can do a lot of things. Sure, can. it's a mistake. You don't want to just like you're cranking in a spinning oh, no. lure. Because bugs don't do that. No. But you make it vibrate a little in the current, you strip Absolutely. a little bit, and then you let it sink back and down. And depending and come on up which. And down, and really on the swing, rather than like this, it goes up, 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 sure. up, 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 like and that. And depending on the current, you can either mend upstream or downstream to, to keep the that speed. That's right. And then at the end of this swing, before I pick up and make a cast, I'll just let it vibrate in the current. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it'll come up the top and just be mm -hmm. skipping on top of the current and get a terrible strike. Oh, yes. Then you can even strip in a little bit and let it sink back. Then make a cast. And again, sure. you can walk down the stream and pretty well cover the whole stream. That's the classic wet mm -hmm. fly swing. But then, as you say, you can cast across. You can mend to get it to sink. Go down a little bit. A variety of things. But the, the key here is don't just strip it in oh, like no. so many people do. And then the argument comes, did the fish follow it all the way in or was the fish holding <laughs> on the bank? <laughs> yeah. But use a variety of retrieves, keeping in mind that this little thing is a bug and the little bugs don't swim and upstream make against alive. the current. Make it look alive. Make it look alive and struggling. And, and there again, you can see that. That gold oval tinsel, it just shines oh, on sure. that body, which yeah. really and goes through. You get the movement. You bet. Keep in mind, whenever you're fishing any fly, what you're trying to represent mm -hmm. and make the fly act that way. Mm -hmm. Give the fish what it expects to see, where it expects mm -hmm. to see, Naturally. acting like it expects it to act. That's right. So that's it for tonight. Tie some flies and have a good time. We'll see you next week. Dave and Leroy have produced two 90-minute videos covering new and exciting tips on how to make your fly tying better and more effective. They introduce you to everything you need as a beginner and demonstrate helpful techniques for intermediate tires. Fly Tying Techniques Volumes 1 and 2 are available by calling 1-800-883-0124. Cost of each video is $28.95 plus shipping and handling or get the two-volume set for just $52.95. 
You can also order the programs in this series. Each 90-minute videotape includes three programs for just $22.95, plus shipping and handling. To order Fly Tying, the Angler's Art Videos and Techniques tapes, call 1-800-883-0124.